Hello. Well, I'm in the greenhouse today and I'm going to do a bit of sowing. Now, I've already sown some of the really early stuff, the onions, peppers, chilies, that kind of thing. But it's not until I start sowing um, brassicas, for example, that I think that the, the season's really begun. Now, it's still really early to be sowing anything and these could quite easily wait until March. It wouldn't be a problem. But I do like to try and get things off to an early start and I won't sow too much of any one thing because um, you never know how they do and I'll do some successional sowings later on. So what I'm going to be sowing today is some brassicas, some chard, I will do some pots of spring onions and some broad beans. So I've got some broad beans overwintering outdoors but they have taken a real pounding this year with the with the really cold winds when they were when they were smaller i had them covered with fleece but a storm ripped that off and um, gave the plants a real good thrashing now i don't know what's going to what's going to come of those um, some of them some of them have um, have broken stems and uh, a few of them are looking okay so I might have to sort of consolidate those rows and, and um, move a few of the, the, the good plants around. But in any event, I thought I would start off some new plants. And these can stay in the greenhouse until conditions are a little bit better outdoors. So what I've got here is the Sutton. So that's a dwarf broad bean. And um, I have a few other varieties that I'll sow over the next um, month or two, but I thought I'd start with this one. So I'm going to put these in reasonably deep pots so they've got plenty of room for their roots to grow and also I won't be under too much pressure to get them out into the ground. They can stay in these pots for a reasonable amount of time. Obviously I don't want them pot bound at all but I'm just going to look over these seeds and that one's not good. Put put them to soak for a little while, not too long. So I'll just leave the broad beans to soak for a little bit until I've sown the other seeds. Um, they don't need to soak for too long. You, you don't have to soak them at all, in fact, but they've got to absorb quite a lot of moisture to get going. So there's there's no harm, I think, in, in giving them a head start with a, with a little soak. So I'm going to start the brassicas and the chard in um, the cell tray. I have ordered some, some new cell trays. These were donated to us many years ago and they, they were old when they arrived and they're, they're looking a bit sorry for themselves right now, but they've had many years of service, so that's not a bad thing. So I'm just firming that down reasonably well because this is a very light sewing mix. This is a blend of sieved multi-purpose compost, coir and vermiculite and I did a video about my seed sewing and potting mixes and I'll leave a link to that in the description. So I'll give that a quick water. I'll just make a small depression in the top as I usually do. So I'll start with the, the chard. I'm just going to pop two seeds in each. Oh, that was three. Two seeds in each, in each cell.
these I'm just going to push down a little bit because they're quite large seeds, the, the chard. Right, that'll do. So I normally I normally grow something like Fort Hook Giant or or possibly a rhubarb chard, but I've got a different Italian variety today. I'll see how that one does. Um, next up is some kale. So to start with, I've got the classic. Dwarf green curled. I just want to pot two seeds in each cell, ideally. Doesn't matter if there's three. I will thin those out to a single seedling later. Then I've got um, a Portuguese kale, or sometimes it's referred to as Portuguese cabbage, but it doesn't heart up, so I think it's probably more kale than cabbage. Um, that's sealed. This used to be more commonly known as Cove Tronchuda. Um, I've not grown this before, but I've heard of it, and it'll be interesting to see how this does this year. So now to the cabbages. The first one is Brunswick. This is a good solid cabbage. And then I've got red drumhead, so that's a, a red cabbage, and it's it's the old classic variety. I've tried some others, um, but I always end up going back to red drumhead. I like it. Well that's it for this tray at the moment. I know there's a, a spare row but I will sew something in that later probably. So I'm just going to cover these lightly with a bit more of the sewing mix. Right, that should be great. Very often I just leave these in an unheated propagator here in the greenhouse and they'll do fine. But the temperature is so low at the moment that I will probably pop them into a heated propagator. It won't be set very high, maybe, maybe 15 degrees and that will be plenty for them. So on to the spring onions. Um, what I'm sowing is the classic white Lisbon and I'm also going to sow some more of the Rossa Lunga di Firenze. Now I've sown some of those already in cell trays and I'm hoping to grow those onto reasonable sized onions. These I'm going to 
harvest when they're quite small. So I'll be growing them in exactly the same way as the white Lisbon. The white Lisbon, of course, will also bulb up if you allow it. It's just that it's usually taken as a spring onion. I'll just give the pots a, a drop of water. So these I'm just going to broadcast across the surface of the pots. Not too many. They need a little bit of room to grow. Just be careful that I don't muddle up those pots and forget which one is which. Right, before I lose my place, I'm going to pop them in a propagator. So the final thing is the broad beans. I'm going to use a bit more of the um, sieved compost in this potting mix I think the broad beans will probably um, be happier with a bit more of this this stuff in it I still want some of the coir and vermiculite because this compost doesn't appear to hold quite as much moisture as I'd like. So whichever way you sow a broad bean, the plant will eventually twist itself around into the right orientation, but it's probably best to sow them with the, the scar. If you look on the end of the seed, you can see that dark scar. It's probably best to sow them with the scar down, and that means they have to do the minimum amount of twisting around to right themselves. So I'm pushing these a reasonable distance into the compost, So the broad beans are done. As with the other seeds, I would just be putting these into a, a fairly low propagator. Um, I don't want, I don't really want the heat, but I just want to keep the this really cold weather off of them so that they have a chance of reasonable germination. Um, most of the things I've sown today will start to germinate sort of around seven to 10 degrees and at 15 degrees, they'll germinate quite reasonably. 
so I don't I don't need much heat. Um, but certainly I don't want I don't want the freezing cold temperatures that we've been having. So that's it for this video. I will be of course sewing a lot more later in the month and much more as we we go into March. So thanks very much for watching and bye for now.